Super Spooky Stories for Kids Mysterious Monsters Introduction You're camping next to a deep, dark lake. The forest is huge, and the trees are old. Shadows hide anything that might lurk in the dark. Every sound sets your nerves on edge. Anything could be out there. The sun is starting to set. It is time to light a bonfire. It is time to tell scary stories about the monsters that might be roaming the woods. Scary stories do not need to be terrifying. They can be spooky, suspenseful, or even funny. Good storytellers can tell what kind of story their listeners want to hear. Grab a flashlight and learn all about the creatures who live in the woods. Tell me s'more. People have shared stories around the fire for 30,000 years. They sat together and used their imaginations. Good storytellers use hand movements, eye contact, and funny or scary faces to connect with their listeners. A sense of timing, suspense, and a satisfying ending are important to telling a good tale, too. The storyteller helps everyone imagine they are part of the story. Chapter 1 A Bigfoot Sighting One summer, Tim and Tanya went camping with their family. They were playing near their campsite when they saw something move in the forest. It came closer. Then it stepped out from behind a large tree. Frightful Fact A man named Peter Byrne has been looking for Bigfoot his whole life. His first trip to find Bigfoot was in 1946. Today, Peter is in his 90s, but he's still looking for Bigfoot. The creature was tall and covered in fur. It stood on two feet like a human being. Its big black eyes looked at them, but Tim and Tanya didn't look back. They ran right back to the campsite. By the time they came back with their parents, the creature was gone. The only thing that proved their story was a single, huge footprint. Some people thought they were making the story up. Other people said the two kids had seen Bigfoot. Do you believe? Hoaxes are made-up things that people believe to be true. Sometimes they are harmless, like pranks. Other times, they can be dangerous or hurtful. Is Bigfoot a trick? Some people say yes. Why haven't we found Bigfoot after all this time? Other people claim they have seen Bigfoot, or they believe people who say they have. In 2014, a survey found that one out of five Americans believe in Bigfoot. Do you? More than 23,000 people have claimed they have seen Bigfoot. In the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada, there are tales of an ape-like creature of the woods called Sasquatch. The Kinalt, Muckleshoot, and Suquamish peoples, among others, all tell stories about encounters with Sasquatches. Many possible Bigfoot tracks have been found. In 1958, a construction worker made copies of huge footprints he found. Hundreds of other footprints have been seen since then. Some were made by bears. Others were fake, made by people playing pranks. Some are still mysteries. Tracking Animals A walk through the woods can be fun. Looking around to see what walked there first can be even more fun. Each animal leaves its own kind of footprint. To find footprints, look closely. 
think about where an animal might walk. Soft ground like mud, snow, and sand is a good place to start. Often, many different animals will use the same trails. You might find more than one kind of track in the same place. Can you spot any of these tracks where you live? In 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin took a hike in Northern California. They had heard stories about Bigfoot. They wanted to catch one on camera. Deep into the forest, they got their wish. Patterson was able to take a blurry, minute-long video. It was of a gorilla-like creature walking across a creek. The creature looked back at the men. Then it disappeared into the woods. Was the thing they saw Bigfoot or just someone in a costume? People have been arguing about it for more than 50 years. But the people who have seen Bigfoot up close and personal will never forget their day in the woods. Bigfoot versus Humans Everything we know about Bigfoot comes from people who believe they saw it in the wild. Photos, footprints, and personal stories are the only sources we have to get information about Bigfoot. Bigfoot Footprint width 7.5 inches Footprint length 18 inches Height 8 to 10 feet Weight 400 to 1,000 pounds Sprinting speed 35 miles per hour Average human Footprint width 4 inches Footprint length 9.5 to 11.5 inches. Height, 5.3 to 5.8 feet. Weight, 137 pounds. Sprinting speed, 18 miles per hour. Olympic sprinter Usain Bolt can run at 27.8 miles per hour. Chapter 2 Yikes! A Yeti! The Sherpa people live near the mountains of Nepal. They tell ancient legends about dangerous wild mountain creatures known as Yeti. Frightful Fact The Sherpa name for Yeti is Metokangmi, or Man Bear Snowman. Dawa was a Sherpa boy. His uncle guided people through the Himalayan mountains. Dawa was still learning how to climb the steep paths. He tried to keep up, but started falling behind the group. As they got farther and farther away, Dawa began to panic. He started to climb faster. In his panic, he slipped. He slid back down the snowy mountainside. Living in the mountains The Himalayas stretch 1,500 miles across South and East Asia. Mount Everest is part of those mountains. It is the highest peak in the entire world. Its highest point is more than 29,000 feet above sea level. The Sherpa people have lived near Everest for more than 6,000 years. They are used to living in the mountains. The higher you climb, the less air there is to breathe. Almost half of the people who climb higher than 8,000 feet above sea level end up getting sick. Sherpas live at more than 14,700 feet above sea level. Sherpa Tenzing Norgay helped climber Edmund Hillary reach Everest's highest point in 1953. Since then, others have dreamed of making the climb. Every year, Sherpa guides take adventure seekers up the mountain. Dawa was not hurt. He brushed himself off. Then he saw a mark in the snow. It was a huge footprint. 
Dawa put his right foot in the footprint. He had to stretch to put his left foot in the next print. He followed them. The tracks went back up the mountain. Dawa hoped they would lead him to the group. Instead, the tracks led to a cave. The cave smelled horrible. Hello, he called. He heard something move around inside. Maybe it was his uncle. Hello, he called again. Suddenly, the cave rumbled. A huge roar answered back. Dawa saw a big, white, hairy face. It had huge, sharp teeth. Dawa turned and ran back down the mountain as fast as he could. Frightful fact. Nobody has found real proof of yetis yet. Scientists have tested fur and bones thought to belong to yetis. Those samples came from bears and dogs. Seeing is believing. Yetis and Bigfoots are similar. One big difference is their fur. People who have seen Bigfoots all describe creatures with brown or red fur. Yetis are often described as white. Why? The answer is camouflage. Animals use camouflage to blend in. Bigfoots live in the forest. Trees and dirt are brown. Having fur that matches makes it easier to hide. Yetis live in the snowy mountains. White helps them hide. There have been some reports of yetis with gray-white hair or reddish-brown hair. Some people think yetis might have to climb down the mountains to get food sometimes. They would need some camouflage away from the snowy areas, too. Chapter 3 Interview with Dr. Frankenstein Based on the original story by Mary Shelley One day, Henry Clerval ran into his best and oldest friend, Dr. Victor Frankenstein. The doctor was very upset. Henry tried to find out what was wrong, but Dr. Frankenstein would not sit down to talk. Let me take you home, Henry said. Then you can tell me what is wrong. Behind closed doors, the doctor broke down. He told Henry that he had tried to make a living man. Instead, he had created a monster. He was afraid of the thing that he had made. In fear, he left the laboratory. When he came back the next day, the monster was gone. Who was Mary Shelley? Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, 1797 to 1851, was born to be a writer. Both her parents were writers. She married a writer, too. She wrote Frankenstein when she was only 18 years old. She was on vacation in Switzerland with friends. The weather was dark and dreary. Nobody wanted to go outdoors. Bored, the friends started telling each other ghost stories. Then, they challenged each other to write their own. At first, Shelley had no ideas. Then, one night, she had a dream. She saw a scientist trying to create life. The story she wrote was about that dream. Frankenstein was the clear winner of the contest. It was published in 1818. Dr. Frankenstein looked everywhere for the monster. He talked to many people who had seen the creature. One man saw the monster in the woods. He had been cooking dinner over a fire. The monster saw the fire and came close. Afraid, the man ran back to the village. He told everyone what he saw. Frightful fact. The monster is not named in the story. People started calling the monster Frankenstein 
after the doctor who created him. The villagers went back to the woods with torches and clubs. They were afraid of the monster, but they did not know that the monster was afraid of them, too. The frightened monster ran away. He hid in a cave so no one would see him, said Dr. Frankenstein. He grew very lonely. What did the monster do next? Henry asked. He found a home not far away, Dr. Frankenstein said. An old blind man lived there with his two children. The monster watched them through the window. He loved to hear their voices. He listened to them. He learned how to speak. Henry asked, Did the family ever discover the monster? Yes, said the doctor. That was when his happiness ended. The doctor explained that one day, the blind man was home alone. The monster sat by the man and they talked for a long time. The blind man was very kind. He did not know he was talking to a monster. But soon, his children came home. They saw the monster and screamed. The monster tried to tell him not to be afraid. The boy grabbed a log from the fire. He waved it at the monster until he left. Feeling Alone Frankenstein's monster is like a human, but he is not a human. He is smart, but lonely. People find him scary because of the way he looks. The blind man who cannot see what the monster looks like, is the only one who treats him with kindness. Every person wants to be treated well. Helping people feel like they belong is a responsibility we all share. Treating people with kindness lets them know we value their thoughts and opinions. How would the story be different if the monster had been accepted by the people he met? I never found the monster, Frankenstein said sadly. I heard more stories. He ran farther and farther away from people. I followed him all the way to the Alps, but I still could not find him. The doctor shook his head and cried. Do you think the monster is angry with you? Henry asked. Yes, said the doctor. He must be very lonely and very angry. Then, Henry said, it is probably good you never found him. He might want revenge. I doubt that I will ever see the monster again, said Dr. Frankenstein. Just as well, said Henry. He got up and left. As Henry shut the front door, a bolt of lightning struck outside. For a moment, the doctor thought he saw the shape of a huge man in the window. Then the room went completely dark.